And so we get Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One prime, baby! What is going on everybody welcome back to another detroit lions video now we've talked in recent days about some of the biggest needs going into the nfl draft for the detroit lions we've talked about edge rusher we've talked about safety and now we're going to talk about the weakest position from a year ago being the wide receiver position now the lions have put a lot of work into the wide receiver position opposed to what it was in week one of 2021 right they now have Josh Reynolds, Amon Ross St. Brown has come into his own, and they've added DJ Chark in the offseason. But I do believe the Detroit Lions are still in a position to add one, if not two, wide receivers in this year's class in order to really in order to really solidify that positional group and in order to really solidify that group as a whole moving forward with Jared Goff or the future successor at quarterback. So today we are going to take a look and we are going to rank some of these wide receivers. Now again, these wide receivers more than any other position are going to be ranked off of fit, how I think they will fit the Detroit Lions system. It's ranked off talent, but again, talent doesn't do anything if it doesn't fit with your quarterback if you don't have chemistry with your quarterback if you're not the kind of wide receiver that jared goff likes to throw to you're probably not going to rank as highly on this list as if you were a wide receiver that resembles more of an amon ross st brown a wide receiver that resembles more of a josh reynolds jared goff has his types of wide receivers that he feels comfortable with in more than any other position i think wide receiver has to do more with fit than actual talent when it comes to ranking these receivers. Nonetheless, we will get right in to these rankings. Now, starting off with tier one, these are the guys that I'm not gonna say are pro bowlers or all pros because there are so many good wide receivers in the NFL, you truly never know. But these are the guys that I think will go early in the NFL draft. These are guys that I don't think the Lions will have an opportunity to draft, but if one of them ends up falling or if the Lions make a trade to the middle of the first round and end up picking up one of these players, these would be like the top end guys. These would be the best of the best in order to join the Detroit Lions. Now, first off is Garrett Wilson. I know I said fit was the biggest thing, but Garrett Wilson's simply the best player in the draft. Like he's, he might be the best offensive player in this entire draft class. And he is certainly the best wide receiver if he somehow falls, right, if the Lions somehow make a trade to 10 and Garrett Wilson's there and none of the big defensive players are there, Garrett Wilson's your move, right? If Garrett Wilson somehow falls and you want to trade up, Garrett Wilson's simply the best wide receiver in this class. It's super unlikely. It's probably not going to happen, but he is a wide receiver in this class and anything is possible in the NFL. Now, Chris Olave is my wide receiver too. He, to me, is the best fit. He fits what the Lions are looking for a wide receiver, a speedy guy that runs really good routes and has really good hands. That's the kind of wide receiver Jared Goff likes to throw to, guys that can create separation, guys that get two, three yards of space, and he would bring a deep threat. He would bring a route runner. He would bring a really, really solid play to the Detroit Lions. Traylon Burks is my wide receiver three. I think he's the most versatile player in this entire draft class. I think he's the most versatile wide receiving weapon in this entire class. Reminds me a lot of Debo Samuel. If the Lions can add a Debo Samuel, I think it would help their offense excel a lot in 2022. And then Drake London is... Also in tier one, I don't really know where to rank Drake London because he's not the most talented. And he's not the best fit, but he's just a really darn good football player. And honestly, he's definitely tier one. I don't know where to rank him. I don't know where to put him because he's not the most versatile. He's not the best fit. He's not the best player, but he's just good. So I want to put him in this list. I don't know where to put him. Like he's definitely tier one, but I don't know where to rank him among the top four. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I'd be really curious to hear what you guys think. Tier two of wide receivers. These are guys that I think will be available at 32 and 34. And big going off of that, these are the guys that I would take in order at the 34th or 32nd overall selection. Number one is George Pickens, the six foot three wide receiver from the University of Georgia. He reminds me of DeAndre Hopkins. I think he's DeAndre Hopkins 2.0. And quite honestly, if he never tears his ACL, I don't see a reality 
league where he falls anywhere near the 32nd overall pick. Christian Watson's my wide receiver too. Again, to me, he's a little bit, he's a mini DK Metcalf, really big, really fast, really strong, great with the ball in his hands, has some concentration drops here and there, but overall phenomenal player, elite RAS score. He would bring a very different element to the Lions receiving game that I don't think they have, and I don't think they have had since Calvin Johnson's been there. Jamison Williams is on my number three. The ACL really scares me. The one year of production really scares me, right? He couldn't beat out Chris Olave or Garrett Wilson or Jackson Smith and Jigba. Like he would have been the fourth or fifth wide receiver even on that on that Ohio State wide receiving core. Not that he's not a good player, but just with the ACL injury, with I think him being limited with just his route running and maybe his speed, right? I don't think his hands are anything super special. I think he's really strictly just a deep threat. That does scare me, but if he's available at 32 and Pickens and Watson and the other four are already gone, he wouldn't be a bad player to add to the Detroit Lions. Then on top of that, I also think Christian Bell and Jahan Dotson are also very good players that I could see going anywhere from 32 to the you know 45-50 range. If either of those two players are there and the Lions pass at 34, I wouldn't be shocked if they trade up from 66 to pick up a Jahan Dotson or a David Bell in this year's class. Now, this wide receiver class is incredibly deep, and there's a lot of guys, even into the late seventh round, that I think will make an impact on their team. Wide receiver is just that kind of position where, you know, any player can make an impact. I think wide receiver is one of the hardest positions to project into the NFL because a lot of their production and a lot of their success at the next level comes with the offensive coordinator, it comes with the culture, it comes with the team, comes with the scheme. There's a lot of dependent variables at the wide receiver position. There's a lot of depending variables at the wide receiver position. And I think all of these players will succeed at the NFL. Like I might be ranking them tier one through four. I do genuinely think every player I mentioned today will have some kind of success in the NFL. My tier three of wide receiver is the guys that I think will go around 66, guys that I think aren't necessarily like second round picks, but they'll go late day, they'll go late second round to early third round. The guys like this include Wayndale Robinson, the wide receiver from Kentucky, John Mechie, the wide receiver from Alabama, and Calvin Austin and Jalen Tolbert, the two kind of smaller, faster wide receivers. That, that have been gaining some steam as the offseason goes on. These guys are not quite as high on my list. John Mechie, again, the ACL injury does scare me. and I think his ceiling is limited. I don't think he's nearly as talented as Jamison Williams or Calvin Ridley or any of the Bama wide receivers that have come out in recent years. I just don't think he's that kind of player. And I think the Bama logo is kind of helping him a little bit. I think he's very limited as a player. I think he'll be very good for a long time, but I think the wide receiver you're getting on day one is going to be very similar to the wide receiver you get when entering your four or five and that's why he's low he's a little bit lower on my list Jalen Tolbert and Calvin Austin I think are very good players but I don't think they fit the Lions as well as some people might think right they're kind of smaller faster speedier guys we kind of have that guy like like Khalif Raymond's our, our speed guy Khalif Raymond's our deep threat and Amon Ross St. Brown's our slot and utility player so I just don't see a role for them unless one of those two guys gets hurt and I'm not going to bank on a wide receiver getting hurt just to put them in a higher tier and then of course, Wayne Dale Robinson, again, really one year of production at the University of Kentucky. I believe I had like 12 yards per reception. As a freshman at Nebraska, average, I think 12 yards per reception as well. He's always been a good player, but at the end of the day, he didn't really get his production or he didn't really get his targets until late in his collegiate career. And I just don't think he ranks above some of the other big names in this class. Now, tier four are the late day two, early day three. This is like your 97. This is your fourth, your fifth round picks. These are the guys that I think will go fairly early on day three. Who? I think these are guys that I think will go fairly early on day three. My favorite of these players, my favorite sleeper of this class is Justin Ross, a player that was projected to go in the early first round after his freshman season. Did have a little bit of an injury and does have some injury concerns, but as far as talent, I don't think you're going to find better talent at the 100, at the 97 range. If you haven't selected a wide receiver and Justin Ross is on your board, I think Justin Ross can be this year's Amon Ross St. Brown. Right, and I talk about Amon Ross St. Brown because he was the line and sleep race season ago, right? He was their wide receiver. They didn't take him until pick 112, and he ended up being the wide receiver one by the end of the season. 
I think Brad Holmes can do it again. Brad Holmes dominated day three of the draft yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. He dominated day three of the draft last year, getting Amon Ross St. Brown and Derek Barnes in back to back picks. He absolutely killed the fourth round, and I think he can do it again. I know we don't hold a fourth round pick, but if we're talking 97 or that fifth round pick, I think Brad Holmes can do a lot of damage on day three, picking up a lot of sleepers, and Justin Ross might just be one of them. Now, Vilas Jones is another player who's worked with the Lions at the Senior Bowl, was really, really good, had some good chemistry with the Lions wide receiver coaches. He's also a kick and punt return specialist for the Vols, which I think could be big if you plan on moving on from Khalif Raymond relatively soon. Then you have guys like Tyquan Thornton, who very nearly set the 40-yard dash record at the NFL Combine, and Bo Melton, the wide receiver from Rutgers. I think he's a very good player. I think he was severely limited by the Rutgers system. I think he was very limited by the quarterback play at the University of Rutgers, but I think in the NFL, he's going to be a much better football player, and I think he'll be a big addition to whatever team is lucky enough to get him in the fifth or sixth round. Again, I think he could also be, just like Justin Ross, be that, you know, day three sleeper that probably shouldn't be a day three, but because of quarterback player, because of system, or just because of the sheer depth of wide receiver in this class, he's going to fall farther than he should. And then my sleepers, my late round guys, like my round six and sevens, my round six and sevens, just to list them quickly, would be Kyle Phillips, Charleston Rambo, Dijean Dixon, Jalen Naylor, and Taylor Martin. I think they're all going to be successful. I think they'll all have roles in the NFL. They're definitely going to compete for roster spots and they're definitely going to compete for playing time. And I mean, these are guys that you can get sixth, seventh round, if not even an undrafted free agency, just for a little bit of competition and just to push the rest of these guys on the roster and, like, you know, and let them know your position isn't safe. Your spot is not saved here. You need to work and you need to earn your spot or else this rookie is going to come in and take your spot. Well, all that being said, though, that is my tier list. Those are the top wide receivers I have on the board for the Detroit Lions. As far as talent, I think, of course, I think Garrett Wilson's the number one, but as far as like the best pick, I think it would be George Pickens at 32. As far as value, I believe the best value would be Ross at at, I think the best value would be Ross at 97 or maybe even Ross in the fifth round if he ends up falling that far. I don't think the Lions are going to take a wide receiver high, though, to be very honest. I do believe the Lions will take a very similar approach to last year as this is an incredibly deep wide receiving core. I think Holmes waits. I think Holmes waits until day three. Maybe he even waits until the fifth or sixth rounds to do make his move at wide receiver. Because looking at the roster right now, DJ Chark's going to command the ball. Josh Reynolds is going to ask for touches. Amon Ross St. Brown needs touches. I mean, he just absolutely needs the touches of the football. Right? Quintez Cephas is coming back. Khalif Raymond's coming back. TJ Hawkinson's coming back. DeAndre Swift is coming back. There's already a lot of mouths to feed. There's already a lot of people to get the football to. And I think adding one more really high isn't going to benefit the Detroit Lions as much as some people might think. I think the best move is to wait until the fourth round. Get that hungry wide receiver. That wide receiver that shouldn't have fallen. That Justin Ross. That Bo Melton. Right? That guy that's going to be a better pro than he was a collegiate collegiate wide receiver and let him earn his spot. Let him be hungry. Let him fight and let him earn his spot in the NFL, right? He won't command plays. He won't take away snaps early from these guys that you just paid big money, but two or three years down the line, or even at the end of year one, you might see a breakout star just like St. Brown did a season ago. So with all that being said, that is it for you guys today. Just like the rest of the rankings, let me know what you guys think about these and what rankings would you give to this wide receiver class? I'd be very curious what you guys think, but with all of that being said, that is I for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching, and until next time, and as always, go Lions!